<laughs> Hi. <laughs> Good morning to everybody. Okay, guys, welcome to this new episode. Now, listen up. This episode is going to be a little interesting because we're working in this uh, 2017 Toyota Aqua. And uh, I want to show you guys with as much details how hot weather really affects the high voltage battery's performance over time. So, I want to take out this high voltage battery and I want to show you guys how does hot weather affect if you remember about the loss capacity over time, what does really happen. You want to find out what happens to those modules that get unbalanced and why. Okay, stick around and then we will continue then. Okay. Let me let me show you my alarm number one. Give me a second. Which is uh, as you can see, I have the intake air temperature is showing me 80, 81 degrees. But look at number one, number two, and number three. Look at the difference between number one and number two. Which, if you guys remember. The modules in the middle, they suffer more thermal stress over time because remember, those are modules trapped between each other. And then, obviously, they are going to heat way much more than the other ones. And how do we see that? Let me show you once again. When I talk about the modules in the middle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I mean about three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Those are the modules in the middle. And the difference between the modules in the middle and the temperature sensors from the size is pretty much, I would say too much. Uh, measuring in Fahrenheit, I could accept probably two degrees in normal condition, but more than five degrees, for me, that is not acceptable talking about that the modules compared to the modules in the middle compared to the one from the size they're suffering way much more hence there is going to be a loss capacity over time so a vehicle like this one that has less than 100,000 kilometers uh, and a high voltage battery suffering this level of thermal stress obviously is going to have some loss capacity so how do we avoid that well Pretty sure you guys saw our previous videos which basically what we do is just we just rotate the modules and avoid this difference in temperature one extra thing obviously over time because of temperature heat there is going to be also some resistance in the connecting locks between the modules we got to check that too Okay, so as I said, there are many options that you can do. You can replace it for the new one, the originals. Uh, you can install uh, the nickel plated if you want, or if you don't find anything, you can just polish them. That's it. So let me take out this battery, okay? Let me service the battery. Let me fully charge. Let me do a rebalance. This is a process that's gonna take um, probably a day, day and a half. And once we finish, we should see a little difference in results. We're not going to recondition. We're not going to recondition, I'm sorry. Uh, we're not doing any cycle uh, just yet. We just want to see the results. How does the module rotation affects and clean the connectors after, and then obviously a rebalance. Stick around and we will continue then. Let me take out the battery. Well, just a quick reminder when taking out the battery, obviously the first thing we're gonna do is uh, disconnect the 12 volt battery, okay? Then take out the service plug grip, of course, and then we can begin to disassemble. And once we open the battery, we'll do some basic measurements to make sure the system is discharged. One thing. 
anybody can work with hybrid vehicles my recommendation is always follow the safety protocols because you got to remember high voltage battery can kill you so please don't play games with it it's not worth it all right as long as you follow safety protocols okay disconnect everything whatever is related with the high voltage battery using your gloves okay nothing should happen okay so take care all right now one thing i gotta take out the high voltage battery first and there's a process i'm not gonna show you that because i have more videos about that and then once they get it to the lab once they properly disassemble i will show you how does hot weather affects these high voltage battery but the thing is i have received a lot of messages from people telling me there's a guy that wrote me from california he said no, but, but why are you servicing those batteries because i have a prius with 100 over 150,000 miles and the battery is not giving trouble at all i could say yes you're right the problem is hot weather california is not a hot weather in california you even have some uh winter that doesn't happen here in, in for example in the caribbean some other places in the world that is always hot so yes the difference in uh, thermal stress to the battery from the hot weather to the cold weather it's pretty much just, it's very high and of course people who live in cold weathers those batteries don't suffer at all they take years and years to suffer but here like for example here in the caribbean it's like the daily stuff the weather is always hot so we will continue then hi again i found something very interesting that i want to share with you guys one of the main reasons that we want to discover in this video take a look so we said that this vehicle is a 2017 which we know it has then five years okay and this security tape is telling me that this high voltage battery it's completely original so then five years a little less than 100,000 kilometers and 20% of lost capacity we want to know why does that happen because as I said in the comments before I get I might get some messages from somebody telling me that uh, there are some people that barely touch the battery in the next 10 years, 8 years. We want to discover why are these batteries serviceable and why do they need to be serviced so often. We have videos about that, but let's, let's continue deep diving when it comes to temperature and how it affects it's this high voltage battery. So, we will continue. Let me keep taking it out. But original battery, nobody has ever touched it. After 5 years, we'll see what's going on. All right, so we have the battery here in the lab. Let's check for a moment. How is the cooling fan? And there is precisely my point that whoever thought clean this fan, it didn't clean. So see how much dusty. And as I said, by brushing, by just brushing, you won't fully clean it because look at all that dust. That takes away. A lot of efficiency to the blade in the cooling fan and of course it won't cool as much as it should uh, cool then in time when I said over time we're talking about years passing in the case of this battery we're talking about five years let's open the battery and let's see the condition of the battery <clears throat> that has 20% of lost capacity and how is the battery inside after five years let's take a look let me open it okay so the battery is fully open the data that we were seeing from the scan tool is from this this is the intake air temperature that comes from the high voltage battery cooling fan enters the air passes through this temperature sensor and then flows out between these gaps and obviously these are one two and three outlet temperature sensor so the relationship between these three temperature sensors to the intake one there's always of course going to be a difference one is the intake it's cool air 
and then the, these batteries obviously every time you accelerate or decelerate or when it comes to the regenerated braking of course they produce heat because remember it's high current flowing into the batteries it's natural they're going to produce um, heat and then of course the thing is they are supposed to be equal or close to equal in temperature because the problem is if you have 20 modules connected in series and a high current flow between them and because of these modules are trapped between each other the they become heat the heat exchanger efficiency compared to this one they are not trapped or this one that are not trapped obviously this one trapped between each other they're going to heat more hence over time the more heat the less capacity that is the natural damage of this high voltage battery over time that doesn't happen quickly but happens over time but we're talking about a, ve a vehicle with five years in this case and a little less than 100,000 kilometers so my point is does this battery require servicing the answer always is going to be yes I have proven that but my other point is once again if these cells of modules are trapped between each other compared to this one what do we do well we perform the module rotation that should be done as often as possible Jose again how often well I if you live in a hot weather I could recommend because these batteries are not so difficult uh, to extract and take it out and take it apart uh, once a year as I said this is the purpose of the channel preventive maintenance so you could keep your batteries for years and years remember I am focused on most of these type of hybrid vehicle they are located in hot weather not cold weather you guys living in northern canada or usa europe you guys are great but the ones we live here in, in the middle of the world not cool temperature affects pretty much this high voltage battery now let's see the connecting locks how they do it we continue 2017 almost 100,000 kilometers let's take a look <clears throat> all right so this is what happens with the vehicle so these are natural causes that are a little pushed when the battery overheats with less than 100,000 kilometers okay corrosion carbon bill hence high resistance between them the perfect formula to chaos that produces over time these ones in the middle still overheat more than the other ones the high resistance voltage drop current increase increase temperature overheating and then the battery will completely lose capacity because it starts to leak out all the electrolytes and turns into corrosion once it gets in contact with the oxygen okay all batteries does that especially the batteries with uh, liquid electrolytes the main purpose of these is to show you that even this newest vehicle with with almost 100,000 kilometers in five years they get very affected over time but in hot weathers so I am going to have to clean all these connecting lugs clean all the connectors and then rotate the modules and we will see after we rebalance how does affect the temperature behaving and then the capacity of the overall battery we will continue then okay this is just one side of the connecting lugs and this dark points are exactly what I really hate that produces high resistance 
Now let's check out the other side. <clears throat> right? And as I said, this vehicle is only five years old. So the answer is yes, all my good friends. Temperature really affects this high voltage battery if you live in hot weathers. But however, the good news is everything can be avoided just by a proper often services of the battery, which is exactly what we're doing right now. Of course, this vehicle is almost five years old. It's a little, almost 100,000 kilometers. The battery is totally original, never been touched at all. So we're gonna do the first rotation, okay? Proper cleaning, and let's rebalance again, and we will see the final results. We will continue that. Oh, we're having rain, nice. Okay, guys, I wanna take just a few minutes. Uh, so first of all, if you're liking this video, so all my series of educational videos about hybrid and electric vehicles, please don't forget like and subscribe hit that red button over there you gotta support the channel remember this channel is made for you and one other thing i want to deeply apologize to all my users because of the last video uh, but i sadly had to make it because this guy that understands outdoor things he understands how to he's claiming that my content is based on him which is a big lie because i don't even follow up but, but however I begun to follow him uh, last week I call him and I told him hey my friend let's meet because I want to know what is your problem with me if, you, if maybe I did something wrong so let's meet I don't know how many times I told him to meet and nothing that guy that guy is just probably obsessed with my information and claiming to be a smart man but the problem is when you claim to be a smart man based on a bunch of lies and technical lies you fool yourself and worse you're fooling your customers like not only saying that my content is based on his post but I sign up one of his posts he's saying that alarming the people that don't use the nickel plated boss bars because they're going to rust and they're going to kill your battery and that is a big lie and let me prove it this is the original battery from the Toyota okay these are the original copper boss bars but however look at the main negative outlet okay can you see it's actually a mirror reflecting but it's nickel coated here you go let me show you this is the main connector for the service plug grip which is also nickel plated but see in the middle, it's copper nickel plated. Let me continue. We, have it. we also have the junction block, okay, which is the power relay that opens and closes the circuit, okay, positive, negative, and pre charge. But then the connectors for the battery, can you see? They're nickel plated too. Not only that, I open it. And let me show you how the junction block inside okay here you go and voila these are all copper bus bars with a nickel plated coating protection against corrosion okay obviously this is the original shape mirror reflected but why mirror reflected Obviously, the manufacturers do it as a mirror reflecting to avoid at all cost resistance, especially in the connection. They need to be as smooth as possible. I already explained that. But the thing is, this is one of the outlets. Can you see? This one comes from the... This is the positive one, yes? Let me see, let me confirm, yes. This is the positive outlet, the main positive outlet. But if you compare this nickel-plated coated to the boss bar, the boss bar is thicker and this one not you see let's see let's confirm there you go and there is my point only current flows through this boss bars inside all these boss bars only current flows so this one is the positive enters the positive and this is the positive outlet passes through the current sensor to the outlet 
this one is the negative with a parallel connection to the small relay to what to this outlet to over here which is uh these chart the, i'm sorry the pre-charged resistor okay but then the main negative connection it's right here and there is precisely my point again come to this one with nickel plated so please my friend that understands auto don't fool yourself and don't fool your customers okay i will strongly suggest the way of making business it's about honesty don't play smart mind my friend because people will find that out so you wanted you wanted my attention you wanted me to make you famous i will make you famous but my purpose is teaching you because you're making a big mistake trying to fool yourself and customers okay but anyway you saw i had a video about the boss bars explain how to properly clean it when you cannot buy the original one okay however i never said that the copper one the nickel plated boss bar don't work they work but they have their purpose okay however my vehicle has nickel plated boss bar for the past two years and so far so good why because i keep them clear that's all the secret as long as you keep it clean nothing happened but if, look at this batteries if you don't clean them even the nickel plated coating will get corroded and now i'm gonna have to clean this i'm gonna have to clean this the negative side especially nothing to the junction block obviously because the corrosion difficult to get over here but the original copper ones yes and we want to uh, and we want to come as original mirror reflecting as it gets so i'm gonna have to clean them this is gonna take me a little time uh, and then do the proper rotation of the battery and finally we will begin to rebalance after cleaning all of this and we will see the final result we will continue then before i forget about the junction block there is a video coming uh, probably this week because i'm working on it okay everything what i explain over here um we're gonna go like a little in depth right so stay tuned we're gonna explore the junction block inside every single boss bar and what do they do okay see you then let's continue so there was this guy laughing at me because he's saying that hey this guy crazy cleaning the boss bar with battery acid specifically sulfuric acid well as i said we're talking about facts let me prove my point once again boom corrosion goes away literally instantly there you go bye bye there you go. see the blue sugar look it for yourself don't say it's me <laughs> anyway they are all going in just for a few seconds now literally in 10 to 15 seconds they should be done but i always leave them like five minutes for a deep deep cleaning but as you can see corrosion going bye bye so sulfuric acid really works to clean your boss parts you know so just if you don't have anything to clean it just get an old battery and save some sulfuric acid you can buy that uh, new uh, any car shop it's very it's very cheap so merge them for five minutes that will be enough then once you take them out just polish them a little bit with a 2500 2500 uh, uh, sandpaper your boss bar is better than new we will continue then as you can see about the nuts so usually you see some nuts that don't have corrosion at all and some of them has corrosion specifically the ones that get heat the most and of course the negative side okay it's because of the current flow but my point is you don't really don't want to clean this with acid the acid will destroy everything but what do you say if we play a little bit let's make the exercise i have this this nut from another high voltage battery that also has 
the uh, coating protector layer. Let's see what happens when we put this in battery acid. <laughs> there we go. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Let's see. This information is for you. You saw what happened? <laughs> it completely destroyed the protector layer. And then of course, it's just raw metal over there completely. It's going to rust immediately. So my point is that I wanted to prove don't clean the nuts and don't clean any type of bolts with battery acid because the 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 coat protector layer it will destroy it. <laughs> let's see it again holy cow that is really bad so don't do it we'll continue then and this is the result if you put this your nuts or bolts into acid all right it will destroy completely all the rust, anti-rust protector layer, all right? It was a nice experiment, all right? So you know that, do not use acid to clean the nuts and your bolts. Use cannot normal to clean. Carburetor cleaner, you shake the sugar over there and that should be enough, okay? So we will continue. I got, still got a lot of jobs with this battery, okay? Continue. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so this is the final result of the boss bars already clean it. And as you can see, fully mirror reflecting, very smooth as it gets. Okay. As I say, I don't really polish the other side, not necessarily, but the battery acid, look what it does. It really does the, the job better than nobody. And fast probably take me about I think about about 25 minutes of the whole process to clean this okay now it's time let's get to the battery rotation we will continue that before taking the modules out from the frame let me show you one thing okay we know that this is the part where the battery management unit goes but yet still I know this with my eyes group but always remember just for discipline mark the polarity okay mark the numbers obviously remember your main negative you're always your number one two three until 20 okay which is our main positive and then of course close to the junction block and negative side for the other so what do we need to do we need to rotate the modules so these blocks are going here and these 10 blocks are going now in this part it's my recommendation for the best way to equally rotate the modules. Let me take them out of the frame, properly clean them, rotate them, and we will assemble back. We will continue. It took me about 10 minutes to the whole process to take them out the frame, properly clean and rotate them, as you just saw in the hyperlapse. Let me show you the results. Okay, so here's the whole pack. As you can see now, number one is now matched to L, the one who's supposed to be the 11, negative, negative. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, until 20, which is now, the, it was the main positive, okay, which is the last one, now it's in the middle, okay? And now the last one, which is supposed to be number 10, was here. Main positive is now the main positive. And number one, of course, it's in the middle. Have this as a guide when you rotate in your modules, which is a very easy technique, okay? And perform this rotation, I could say every once a year, or maybe every two years, okay? If you find a vehicle which is very extremely dirty you're definitely gonna have to rotate it if not probably every two years will be more than enough okay that depends on your technical point of view when you inspect 
the vehicle, okay? We will continue that. I gotta keep assembling this. So we just finished the module rotation and fully clean. Um, but before we assemble all the components, I gotta take the cooling fan. I gotta take it apart, but as I guess you can see, because of this foam over here, this has never been serviced at all. So, I see, no, no marks at all. So I have to take out this clip, take out the blade, fully wash it, and let's see. This is the before. We will see the after, just now. Once again, this is very easy to extract, right? So you just have to take out this center clip with any, any type of uh, flat screwdriver, and you simply, with your hands, you take out the blade. So now the blade, we can fully submerge it in some water and soup, clean this inside properly, and assemble back, all right? We will continue then. And this is the final result. With absolutely no marks at all of any kind of dust. Okay? Especially here in the back. Don't be lazy when you're servicing your cooling fan because your high voltage battery life depends on this stupid blade. Okay? So the cleaner, the better. We will continue. So that is the actual voltage of the battery and right now is in charging to finally rebalance but that's gonna happen tomorrow. This was all the process for today. So we're gonna have to wait until tomorrow at least 24 hours for the battery to fully charge and then begin to rebalance all the modules. Obviously no machine is better to rebalance than this gentleman over here, my mechanical balancer. But that is a very, very slow process. It takes approximately two to three days to get the proper. However, with the machine is a little different because you're forcing it, okay? And with this machine, we are just charging the battery continuously until most of the modules reaches the top and then that maximum voltage dissipates in heat until it gives time for the rest of the modules to reach exactly the same voltage. Now, they don't overheat because first of all, the machine is uh, overriding the fan signal, okay? And of course, it's dissipating the heat. And it's a very, very low rate current, about 0.1 to 0.3 amps of charge. So it's a very, very slow charge. So, the Prodong machine, I'm not promoting that. You can use the CQ machine. You can use even the Mary Fancy. All of them do exactly the same thing. Charge the battery at a very, very low uh, current, okay? So, we will continue tomorrow, all right? <laughs> Hi. So, it's been almost 24 hours. The battery has been connected to the machine to force the rebalance at the high top state of charge. Okay, so we have uh, 168 volts, which if I divide that into uh, 20, is gonna give me approximately, I think, 8.4. Okay, so I would say this battery is good to assemble. Obviously, if you want to properly rebalance with 100% accuracy, you have to connect it to this machine for at least a couple of days. But the customer needs the vehicle. But this is a battery with 80% of capacity, which is a, I would say it's a good battery. Okay, so we're just, let's call this process the basic service of the high voltage battery. We didn't do any type of deep cycle, okay? We didn't do the deep balance, just force the balance through a collective charger, okay? This process doesn't fix a bad battery. Be careful with this. Now, this is just, let's call it the basic service for a good battery that, of course, once I, let me show you. Once I, for example, avoid at all costs, 
the resistance from the connecting lug, okay? Properly rotate the modules. Look at this big gap here between the middle because usually when they begin to swell, they get a little deform. And you notice it right here in the middle. In spite of being a battery with only five years and less than 100,000 kilometers. Huh, what do you say? But anyway, she matched all the positions fine, okay? The cooling fan right now is blowing as it gets. Now let's see. Once we took, we reduced the resistance to almost zero when it comes to milli ohms with the, with the connecting locks. Clean all the compartments, rotate the modules, put the temperature sensors in the right position. Let's install the battery and let's see how it performs now that is less resistance, cleaner and more ventilated. We will continue. Let me install the battery. So the vehicle is driving right now at operating temperature and the system allowed me to charge the battery to almost 70, 70%, 77%, I'm sorry. Which is a very good thing because usually when the battery is well in balance, when you charge it manually, it's supposed to reach over 75%. So that is a very first good sign. But what I'm doing right now, let me show you. I'm draining the battery at 6.5 amps, okay? So usually these tests take about 900 seconds, which is <clears throat> 50 minutes. So usually the battery draining at 6.5 amps for over 15 minutes, we know it's a good battery and the system will give us the average state of health, okay? Let's finish the test and we will continue then. It's taking forever, it's taking forever, it's taking forever to discharge. Go ahead. Finally done. All right. So the test, the low test to calculate the average state of health of the battery, it lasts a little over 17 minutes. Discharging the battery at 6.5 amps, okay? And it's giving me an average of a little over 94%. Now remember, in just one day, coming from 78 point something percent to 94% is a very, very nice improvement. But the reason is, I mean, you might be asking, how come just by simply cleaning, connecting lugs, having better ventilation, okay? Reducing the resistance between the connections of the battery and just um, 24 hour rebalance forcing the the state of charge of the battery to its maximum how come that can improve so much these modules to become um, um, how you call it? well more in balance hence the state of health of the battery is going to improve like in this case from 78 percent to a little over 94 percent which is great well it's simple it's just reducing ventilation uh, performing better ventilation less resistant better current flow and once you rebalance obviously the battery is going to improve because all the modules have the same state of health and same state of charge hence instead of discharging unequally all right they're going to discharge equally just by doing a very simple basic service this is not a deep cycle treatment this is just a normal basic this the deep cycles 
uh, treatment is a long process. It takes a little over a week to be properly done with, uh, there is a video coming very soon about that, but that's gonna take me a long to do it, so, but I'm working on it, okay? In the meantime, the main focus of the channel is just preventive maintenance, especially hot weather. Hot weathers really affect your high voltage battery when your battery, it's dirt, the resistance begins to increase between the modules and then of course overheating, overheating, lack of ventilation inside your high voltage battery will affect directly the performance of the modules, especially the ones in the middle. So how does hot weather affect the battery performance? Simple. It discharges the modules trapped between in the middle of the battery and discharge them more than the other and the battery will go on balance and lose capacity and then it will be a overall loss capacity hence the state of health of the battery remember a battery is a uh, it's a series of modules connected in series all right i said it i said it twice okay and remember as a chain is as strong as its weakest link so if the modules in the middle become less with less power to hold uh, the current, uh, the, the voltage, I'm sorry, there will be a loss capacity, hence less performance. So, I hope you guys like this video. It's a very common, but I just wanted to go in depth about how does the weather affect your battery. The people who live in USA, Northern USA, Canada, Europe, don't suffer this. It's a vehicle from here, from Central Caribbean, hot weathers yes the battery suffers pretty much okay now please support the channel like and subscribe hit that button this is an educational channel made for you we're working on great great more videos that come in okay hybrid solution diagnostics the channel made for you i'll see you guys in the very next episode bye bye